Hi, welcome to CG Dive. In this video, I'll be showing you an example of retargeting to a custom rig. I already showed such examples in my retargeting videos uh, for Rococo and then for AutoRig Pro as well. But the problem with uh, custom rigs is that they don't have a standard, so each of them can be a little bit different, so more examples could be useful. This rig was given to me by someone on Discord. They were trying to retarget to it and were having problems. And the rig is not completely custom, as you may see. Uh, it has a lot of uh, rigify in it, so it looks like somebody took a rigify rig and then edited it and in my opinion made it a little bit weird, but that's beside the point. The point is that we have this rig and we want to retarget to it. And as I have already said before, the key to solving such retargeting problems is one, understanding the retargeting process, which you can learn from my previous videos, and two, understanding your rig. And so let's dive into this rig and see what we have. First, we have FK legs and FK arms. So arms and legs have been switched to FK on purpose because retargeting to FK limbs is a little bit easier. But I'm also going to show you what to do with IK a bit later in the video. So we have simple legs and arms. Uh, we have a neck and a head. So far, so good. Also clavicle bones, they also work well. And then we come to the spine, which is the most complicated part of this rig. First we have a torso control, which will move everything with it. So that's nice to have. Having such a control in your rig is always nice for retargeting. Then we have this hips bone, which moves the lower body. Uh, so I'm going to try to avoid this one because uh, it usually leads to problems. It will make retargeting the legs a bit of a pain. I explained why in the previous videos. And then up here in the chest area, we have two circular controls. So one of them seems to tilt the body left and right and back and forth. But if I try to rotate it on the Z axis, it kind of does nothing. Um, so there is this other control here, which if I rotate, it doesn't move um, left and right and back and forth, but it does uh, tilt the body like this. And so it took me a while to figure it out, but these two controls together kind of give me uh, the chest control that I need. Okay, so this was understanding your rig. You have to know which controls are essential for moving the whole character. So I'm going to select the FK legs for now, FK arm controls, neck and head, clavicles, and these two chest controls, and also the torso. And now, as I recommended in the previous video for custom rigs, I would recommend creating an intermediate rig and constraining your main rig to it. And you can do that manually. You can watch my Rococo video where I show the manual approach, but I would recommend using our retarget helper add-on. You can get it from here. It's just a collection of small utilities that can help you in retargeting. You can get it for free or leave us a bit of a tip and then install it. And activate it and you'll have retarget helper in your side panel. And so the uh, function that you want is extract and constrain. I'm going to rename this to intermediate rig. Cool. So now we have this new intermediate rig. If I go to pose mode and try to move it around, you'll see that it kind of affects the mesh, but something is strange. What's happening is that when retarget helper extracted these bones, it kept their hierarchy unchanged. In the full rig, the different parts of the rig are connected with constraints, but here we got rid of all of the constraints, so we need to establish a basic simple hierarchy. So for example, in edit mode, the arm needs to be connected to the clavicle with keep offset, same on the other side, And this spine bone, which kind of was able to tilt the upper body, it needs to be parented to the chest, which it already is. So this chest bone, I'm not going to retarget to it. I'll just use the chest bone. And that will give me the chest movement that I want. And then the clavicles and neck, I'm going to parent to, the, to this uh, spine bone. 
and the legs I'm going to parent to the torso. Okay, now if I go to pose mode, the torso moves the whole character, the chest moves the upper body, arms are all connected. Okay, so I can see that I can disconnect uh, these bones and that means that they are parented with uh, keep offset instead of connected. I want to parent them with connected just in case. Same on the arm. And with that, I'm actually ready to retarget. So I'm going to go to Rococo and let's start from scratch. My source is this rig, which is called Armature. And the target will be the intermediate rig. I'm going to build the bone list and most bones will be very easy to match. The structure of the arm and legs and uh, neck and head are basically the same. The only problem that we have to solve is uh, matching the spine bones. So here's what I'm going to do. The hips bone, which is this uh, topmost bone in this armature, I'm going to match it to the torso, which is the topmost bone in my target. The first spine bone, I'm not going to retarget at all. And spine one and spine two, I'm going to retarget both to the chest bone. So this will basically make it so the chest movement is compounded by the movement of uh, the spine one and spine two bones. I'm not sure if this is perfect, but it is going to work. So with that, we are almost ready to retarget. One problem that we still have is the rest position. This rig is in T pose and my target is in A pose, so we have to fix this. So I'm going to go to pose mode for the source rig, select all bones, clear all transforms, and then the arm. I'll try rotating around 45 degrees and that looks good. And the other arm, I'm going to rotate minus 45 degrees. And the legs um, also look a little bit different. Actually, let's retarget like this. Uh, first though, I'm going to select all bones and go to my pose library, click the plus button and add new. So that will enable me to come to this pose anytime I want. And now I want to switch the pose to current and retarget the animation. And as you can see, this basically works. Uh, the only problem is that we kind of have this uh, manly walk, whereas the uh, original motion wasn't like this. It was it was more feminine. And I'm going to undo. And this has to do with the uh, rest pose again. So with all bones selected, let's press this uh, looking glass icon. And that will give me the pose that I established earlier. And now I just want to match the pose of the target character a little bit better. So by experimenting, I found out that I need to uh, rotate these bones just by five degrees or so. And I'm going to save this pose again by replacing the existing pose. And now I can try to retarget again. And here we have the improved walk. It looks good to me. You can keep tweaking it if you want. And now if I want to test things, I can switch the action of the source rig to something more challenging. Um, this, for example, is a jump and the character also kind of turns around. So that will definitely be a challenge to retarget. So let's set our pose again and retarget. And there was an error because the new animation that I applied had animated bones that weren't animated in the previous animation. So I have to rebuild my bone list. And again, I'm going to set my torso and spine controls like this. The other pairs uh, can remain unchanged and I'll retarget. And here is our animation. It's looking good to me. So as you probably understand, these retargeted animations are still on the intermediate rig. So ultimately we want to move them to the main rig. So that can be done very easily. I'm going to go to pose mode and I still have these bones that I extracted selected. And to make them easier to reselect, I can actually create a bone group for them. Just create a bone group and assign. Okay, and now anytime I want to select them, I can just press the select button. And then I can go to pose animation, bake action, and bake with these settings. First, I'm going to set my start and end frame. 
I want to enable visual keying. Do not enable clear constraints or you may mess up your rig. Clear parents doesn't matter, it's just for objects, not for bones. And override current action also doesn't matter because we don't have a current action right now. So enable it or don't, it doesn't matter. And clean curves will try to get rid of unnecessary keyframes, but here I'm going to leave it unchecked and press OK. Okay, so here is the action. And so as I have all of these bones selected, I, I can now go to the um, constraints tab and I can disable the uh, constraint and then right click and copy to select it. And now all of these constraints that connected the control rig and the intermediate rig will be disabled. And so now even if I, let's say, delete the intermediate rig, this action will be baked. Now, I don't want to delete it yet because I may want to retarget more animations, so I'll undo. And by the way, if you have our uh, game rig tools add-on, you can mute and unmute constraints with one click. So again, I'm going to select these controls that I used for retargeting. Now I can use the mute and unmute buttons to disable and enable the constraints. I just need to make sure that I enable this option. Otherwise, this operation will be applied to the whole rig. That is very important. So now if I unmute the selected bones, the connection between the intermediate rig and the control rig will be enabled. And then if I go back with these bones selected and with this option, uh, I can also mute. So only the connection will be broken, uh, which just means that I'm enabling or disabling these constraints. Okay, and we should add the same functionality to retarget helper so that you don't have to install bo both add-ons. So now at the end, let's cover working with uh, IK and then we are done with this custom character. So for this custom character, the IK controls are over here. Um, because we are now in FK mode, they haven't moved, but here I can switch to IK mode, for example, also here and this one is for the arms. Okay, so uh, I'm going to select these controls and also the pole targets. So this rig works with uh, pole targets. You can see that it also has these controls here that we have in Rigify, but, but they don't really have functionality. So I'll be using the pole targets. And again, I'm going to use retarget helper and extract and constrain. And then I'm going to combine this new uh, extracted rig with the intermediate rig that I have. So just make it active, control J. So now everything is in the same armature. So go to pose mode now and let's isolate the intermediate rig. Um, so here's the new IK bone that I added. I'm going to uh, switch to individual origins and make it a little bit smaller and then shift click the hand bone and control P keep offset. So now the IK control, uh, which is oriented exactly as the FK one, uh, will move with it and that will automatically retarget the IK controls. And here, this is the IK control. I'll parent it to the FK foot. And again, that will automatically move these new controls that I added with the action that I already retargeted. Okay, so now I have these pole targets and they are super important. Uh, if, if we don't do something about them, then the action will change significantly between IK and FK mode. Um, so for example, here I have the IK control. It, it, as you can see, it's already doing its job. It's following the action. But if I switch to IK mode, you'll see that uh, there is a huge difference between the knee position uh, or the knee orientation. So we need to do something about the pole targets. Uh, let's go back to the intermediate rig and we have a solution for this in retarget helper again we have this function that generates poll targets um, they're not real poll targets it's a bit of a cheat but it works um, so i'm going to use it and here in the options i'm going to set my distance to something reasonable something like this i guess i guess three looks nice so again uh, I have to select the shin of the character and generate. And for the arms, same thing. I have to select the forearm, generate, and one more time. Okay, and that's it. And now let's go to the first frame where things are a little bit more clear. So now I have, I have to constrain these 
poll targets that I extracted to the ones that I generated. So this is the left one. I'll select it and shift select the generated poll target. No, uh, it's the other way around. I'll select the generated one, then shift select the extracted one and control shift C copy location and do the same thing for the remaining poll targets. Okay, so now our extracted poll targets are following the generated ones and they control the actual poll targets in the control rig. So that means that now I have fully functioning uh, IK. If I go to the control rig and try switching to IK, you'll see that the knee orientation does change a little bit, but that is reasonable. So I'm going to change everything to IK now. And let's play the animation again. And as you can see, it works perfectly. Uh, now again, these IK targets are uh, still not baked. So I have to select all of them. And also the poll targets. I can create another group for them because I may need to select them uh, easily again. And now again, I can bake the action with the same settings. This, this time I want to overwrite the current action. Okay, and now I can go to retarget helper and again, mute these constraints. So now these controls are moving on their own, but, but I successfully uh, bake their movement. So I have the action, but I also have the freedom to edit this action with these IK controls. That's it for this video. I hope it was helpful. And again, if you have a complicated custom control rig, then the first important step is to really understand your rig. And then you can use an intermediate rig, which will make the retargeting process possible. And this intermediate rig will ultimately uh, transfer the, the final animation to your control rig. And you can use game rig tools and especially a retarget helper, and that should help you a lot with this workflow.